Welcome to our 938 podcast, all the way from Zambia. And I'm standing at the top of the Victoria Falls. This is one of the wonders of the world. And it's just amazing to see how much water comes down through multiple rivers to the Zambezi River and then goes over. This is one of the few places in the world where you have four different countries come together in one spot. You have Zambia, Zimbabwe, Botswana, and Namibia. It's really a wonderful place to see. We've had missionaries here since the mid 1980s, and they've done a wonderful work here. And I wanna share with you some of the things that God has done through them here in Zambia. When I arrived in Zambia, I had the opportunity to spend the first evening with Dan and Michelle Bowles. They live in Luancha. And it was a wonderful evening, a time of fellowship as I was able to meet with uh, them and some of their pastors and church leaders. We enjoyed the time of dinner, fellowship. They asked a lot of questions and we just had a great time fellowshiping together and hearing about their ministries. Dan took me around and showed me their facilities of the various churches, the Bible college, uh, very impressive facilities that they have for the Bible college. And it was a joy to see what God's been doing uh, through the Bowles family for these many years. Then I had the opportunity to go around with John Riggs. John and Marcia have been missionaries since 1996 in Zambia. And John took me around and showed me a number of their churches. I was able to meet the pastors of those churches and also see their facilities. Unfortunately, we weren't able to see a lot of services because it was during the week. But it was great to meet some of these men and to know that they've been in the ministry for quite some time. And God has used them in these various communities to reach people with the gospel here in Zambia. Soon after our time with John Riggs going around, I had the privilege of going into what they call the bush. It's a very remote area of Zambia where our missionaries Wade and Donna Rasmussen and their three children live. And yes, it's pretty remote in some ways, and they have uh, been given some land by the chief in that area. And uh, with that land, they've been able to kind of build a small mission station, a house and some other facilities and things all on top of this little mountain. Uh, it's actually a little hill. Uh, in that vicinity and that part of Zambia. But it's really neat to be able to go there and see what they've done in reaching those people in that rural setting. Their first church is on some land that was uh, able to be uh, received from the chief. And then also they built a small circular auditorium that they meet in at this time. And uh, he said the church is going well, people are learning. Uh, many of them hearing the truth of Jesus Christ for the very first time. Then we drove uh, about an hour or so away. I mean, it wasn't very far away, but just the roads and the trails to get there were quite rough and small and uh, sandy. We came around this brush area to this place where they had cleared out a little place on their property. They built a little shelter uh, where they meet on Saturdays, I believe it is. And in this shelter, they put a tarp over the top and the people will sit underneath. And so it was great to visit with the Rasmussens and see how God is using them and blessing them in these very difficult areas. In fact, other religions and cults have arrived and that's one of the problems because they teach a lot of false doctrine, things that are not true at all, according to the Bible. The ministry the Rasmussens had is vital in that area of Zambia. And then after visiting with the Rasmussens, I had the opportunity to bar participate and speak at a conference for churches and pastors uh, in Ndola. And that's where the Riggs live. One of the churches and pastors they work with is, uh, is pastored by Webby Bwalia. And Webby's been a pastor there and done a great job. They just built a new building so they were excited to have this conference in their new building. Uh, I was able to speak, I think it was six times, 
uh, during this conference, challenge them on missions. That's what they wanted. They wanted to hear about missions and what God's doing around the world. I was able to show them some pictures and uh, stories and uh, just let them see that they are part of something big that's going on around the world through the Baptist Bible Fellowship International. During the conference, it was really neat to see the various choirs that sang. One of them, they uh, enjoyed singing in English, and they did great singing some hymns and uh, harmonized very, very well. And then another one was a praise team from the church, and I enjoyed hearing their singing. And then another one was from another church, a little bit of a rural church. And this uh, choir, they like to march in. So they would sing three songs at each time, one song marching in, one song at the front of the auditorium, and then one song as they marched out. So it was really neat uh, to be a part of and hear them singing uh, their songs in their language to the same God that we serve and that we believe in. It was spectacular. And then on Saturday, we were able to participate in the building dedication of this new building. And boy, they pulled out all the red carpet and uh, had the ribbon cutting. And then also were, gave me a special gift, uh, a really neat shirt, a traditional shirt. And then I was able to preach for the dedication. And right after the dedication, I spoke uh, for an ordination of two young men going into the ministry. And one of them is the future pastor of that church. So it was a joy to be a part of that process. And I'm thankful that they invited me. And then the last Sunday that I was here, I was able to be a part of John and Marsha Riggs Church, that they uh, reach more of the business class people. And uh, it was a blessing and an honor to be able to be a part of their services. It was on Father's Day. so. I had the privilege of speaking a Father's Day message uh, to the fathers and of course applied it to the others who were there also. So it's been a great trip in Zambia. My last few days in Zambia have been a little bit different than doing just ministry. I've been able to go down to Livingston, Zambia. It's named after David Livingston. And it's been a really neat place to go to because you have the Victoria Falls. Victoria Falls are really one of the wonders of the world. It's a huge uh, falls that come over from the Zambezi River, and it's on the border of Zambia and Zimbabwe. I had the opportunity to walk down to those falls and uh, walk uh, down the walk where the mist comes back up from the falls, goes into the air, and then comes back down as rain. And uh, just a neat experience to be able to go see just the magnitude of those falls as the water comes over. Uh, just amazing to see God's creation and being able to go there while I'm here in Zambia. And then this morning I had the privilege of doing something I've never done. I've done a lot of things in my travels, uh, but this morning I had the opportunity to go and pet and walk with lions. Oh man, it was amazing. It was really neat to have this uh, young male and young female lion being able to pet them and then walk with them, hold their tail, uh, things like that. Uh, just something that you don't always get to do. And I appreciate the opportunity to do that. It was an awesome, awesome experience. As I said earlier, I'm in Livingston, Zambia. And this, of course, was named after David Livingston. David Livingston went all throughout Africa in this, in this region and all through uh, South Africa, Zambia. In fact, in Northern Zambia is where his heart was buried. And then they took his body and carried it by person in hand across the continent over to the Atlantic Ocean and then put it on a ship up uh, to the United Kingdom. Uh, it's just amazing to think about how many years ago that was when he uh, was able to explore the continent and also share the gospel. Our missionaries have been here since the 80s, 1980s, 
and uh, the population has grown to 20 million people in Zambia. Yes, our missionaries have done a great job. We have around 30 churches uh, scattered throughout the country. Uh, we've had a number, a total number of 17 missionaries with the Baptist Bible Fellowship in Zambia. And today we have five. So 17 have been here. Some have gone home for various reasons. We have five left. And I, I just wanna share with you that even since David Livingston's time, many people still need to hear the gospel. And although we have 30 churches, what's 30 churches among 20 million people? And so I would like to challenge you to consider yourself coming here as a missionary. If God's been laying on your heart and speaking to you about doing something for him that'll make an eternal difference in lives of Africans, then consider Zambia and ask him if this is where he would want you to come. Also, I'd like to encourage you after Project 938, which is really after Matthew 938, where Jesus said to pray for more labors. I would encourage you at this time to pray that God would send more labors to Zambia. You might say, well, I'm, I can't go. There's, there's just no way I'm too old or for various reasons I can't go, but you can pray. You can pray that God would send forth labors into the harvest. If we're gonna take up the harvest here in Zambia, any kind of harvest you're gonna take up requires workers. So we need missionary workers to come to Zambia and preach the gospel, train people. The pastors here are saying, please send more missionaries. There are areas where our missionaries have never been, still have not been. There are towns and cities where we could still have more help. And then at the same time, through the different Bible colleges and institutes, a lot of training can be done. So maybe God wants you to be someone who could train and mentor new pastors to go out and start new churches. So I wanna thank you for joining this podcast all the way from Zambia. God's shown me some amazing things here, and yet there's still a great need for the gospel. Would you pray for more labors? Would you pray that maybe God would use you here in Zambia? Hey, I hope you'll uh, like our uh, YouTube channel and check out all the other podcasts that we've had in the past, and we have some new ones planned coming up, and I know that you'll appreciate what you hear and what you see. God bless you.